I'm Roz Clark, the dream doula, and this is the pathway to peace room. And we are going to be talking all things peace and healing and growth and really moving into the direction of our dreams. Because like I said, as a dream doula, my work is really centered around how do we create the best and highest version of who we are meant to be? How do we create our ideal life, living that thing that we know that we're meant for. And a lot of times as we come into um, situations, especially when we're seeking peace, it's either as a result of, you know, some kind of challenge, betrayal, grief. I mean, there's a lot of reasons that we might feel that we need to find peace or create peace. And that's what I would say is I believe that every good thing emanates from us so that we're not victim or held hostage by external situations that we learn and allow ourselves to take our power back to be able to um, move in a direction like I said of our dreams of our healing of our biggest and best ideal life so just let me know through putting in the chat put a one in the chat if anybody here has a dream that they're longing for or working on right now put a one in the chat if you're you have a dream a goal that you're working towards right now let's see what we got yeah we got a one there welcome cool one yeah Yeah. Yay. Cool. You are in the right place and I am in the right place too, because you are my tribe. I love that. So yeah, as we look at how we find or how we create um, the peace and the clarity and um, the determination to begin to move into the direction of our dreams, I'm always about owning as much as I can, like, you know, working on being whole again. I get that, Kelly. Well, I hope that something that I share this evening will help you or resonate with you. Um, So I'm really, really glad that you're here. Thank you. So yeah, you know, as we do this work um, of going into that healing place, that growth place, that place where a lot of times it's a place of rediscovery, rediscovering who we are. And so I want to just say this now, you know, I want to honor you for showing up this evening. I want to honor you that you have made the choice to, to do the work, to come into these spaces that you come with, with a curiosity that you come with um, uh, an intention that you come to show up for yourself. So like, I really want to take this moment just to honor and acknowledge that you are doing that. So if you have not given yourself any credit or accolades today, you know, just put a big old yay in the chat for you. Put a yay for yourself in the chat because you're showing up, you're here, you're in the space and I am grateful and yay for you. That's right. I am grateful and honored um, to be of service. So I'm excited about that. That's right. Yeah. You got to, you know, you got to cheer for yourself because if we wait for somebody else to do it for us, you know, sometimes we'll just be waiting or, you know, a lot of times people don't even know or see or understand, you know, just how much we have already done the level of commitment that we have to to keep on going, to put one foot in front of the other, you know, because and and I find a lot of times that it, you know how they always say check on your strong friends, because it's the ones that make it look so easy, you know, that we make it look so easy sometimes that people are like, oh, she's good. Oh, he's good. They don't need anything, you know. <laughs> and we're like, no. I need a hug, you know, and we don't get to to do that or have that experience as we would want to or get our needs met. And so those are some of the things that I want to speak to this evening as we talk about, you know, this pathway to peace, this healing journey. Welcome as you guys are coming in. Just drop in the chat for me 
where you're you're jo- joining me from, um, where we're all coming from. I love how we can be, you know, around the country, around the world, whatever that is, and yet we can find this place of commonality that we can still come together and um, and celebrate one another. So one of the things that I also want to share with you, um, if you haven't been in my room, my background is, you know, as I was younger, I grew up in the African American church, and there's a big kind of call and response thing in the church. And so if somebody was saying something that resonated with us, we would say, well, or even if somebody, you know, like, it was like, oh, wait a minute, that that hit a little too close to home when you put a well out there. So if there's anything that resonates with you, feel free to put a well in the chat. And um, that'll kind of be our our signal in the room that it's like, oh, OK, you're, you're coming down my street or you're coming down my aisle, you know, so all of that. So I really want this to be, you know, I really want you guys to share in, you know, to interact in the chat. I'll share for a while and then um, definitely open up the mic for some questions or feedback as we go further on. So today I really want to talk about us making the choice to determine what our best and highest life looks like and then giving ourselves permission to go after it. Um, Because a lot of times, you know, when we have setbacks, when we have challenges, when we have disappointments, it's because, you know, our life does not match the image of what we thought it would be. You know, it's like, sometimes it's like, oh, I thought I would be further along than now, or I never thought that they would do something like that to me, or I, you know, I knew they wouldn't, but I had hoped or thought they would live forever. So whatever that experience is that is challenging us in this moment, that there's this this search for for peace, I think that the beauty of it is that we have this opportunity to be our own healer, to be our own rescuer, you know, so that we're not waiting, like I said earlier, we're not waiting for someone or some external um, circumstance to happen that we begin to say, okay, you know what, I get to make a choice. I get to, you know, set my boundaries. Yes, I got a well on that one. Yeah, I get I get to set my boundaries. I get to say what the best and highest version of my life looks like. And I think so many times, especially when we're going through challenges, we forget that because it feels like everything is happening to us. And I say all the time, you know, that life is not happening to us, it's happening for us. And even the most horrific things, like you, you can say, well, Roz, how is that even possible? How is that possible that this, this horrific thing that I'm experiencing is for me? How do, how, do I, how do I reconcile what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing with the trust and the belief that somehow this is going to work towards my good. And so what I would say in that first is I just want to acknowledge, you know, we get to acknowledge every feeling that we feel, you know, because so many times, um, especially, you know, in spaces like this and like people who are in the healing practice, we, we talk about, you know, vibrating at a higher level, meditating and finding our peace, centering, you know, whatever that is, forgiveness. I did a whole, um, you know, uh, room on forgiveness a couple of weeks ago, and I'll actually drop a link in the chat so that you guys can check out the replay of this room or any other ones that I have. Um, But anyway, we we're saying like, how is that even possible? And yet what I can say is, And I think we all can, when we think about, if we took a moment right now to think about the worst thing that has ever happened to us, and we can still say, I'm still here. Yeah, that was awful. And yet I'm still here. Yeah, like I never thought that would happen. And I'm still here. And so 
we get to continue <clears throat> to trust that we are still on the path. We are still showing up for ourselves. We are showing up for our dreams. We are showing up for, um, again, the best and highest version of who we're longing to be. And so in this process, um, in those experiences, we can still look back. I, I love how, like I said, I grew up in the church and the old folks used to say, my soul looks back and wonders how I got over. And, you know, when you're younger, you're like, well, how you got over what? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but you live in life now and it's like, oh, I've got some things that I had to get over. You know, I, I and, you know, or maybe go through or go around or even overcome. And so as we live life, as we walk through this journey called life, you know, we, we have these moments and these opportunities to celebrate. Like I said, even in the trials, we get to celebrate ourselves. We get to celebrate the fact that we keep, like that ever ready bunny, we keep, you know, keep coming back. We keep going. We keep making the best out of a challenging situation. And so finding that space of gratitude, even when it feels like it's 50 shades of crazy, is how we continue to, to move forward, how we learn to trust not only ourselves, and yet find a way to trust again. And that can be really challenging sometimes if we've been through, like I said, betrayals or disappointments or becoming disillusioned that we're like, well, I, I'm just, you know, I'm never going to love again. I'm never going to trust again. I'm never going to whatever that is. And what I want to do is move into that space and that exploration of how do we begin <clears throat> to take ownership of what the future looks like. And so the place that I would love to start with is just being in gratitude. You know, and again, so many times these things feel like, okay, well, like, what do I have, have to be grateful for? And, and that's when we have to try to be, um, we have to move towards being intentional about finding gratitude. We have to move to be intentional about seeking out what we can celebrate and how we celebrate ourselves. So, um, you know, those are, it, it becomes a choice. And yet here's the beauty of it. Let's just kind of be with that place that we have a choice. Because I think so many times the setback, the disappointment, the disillusion, even the fear is like, oh my God, all this is happening and I don't have, I can't do anything about it. And blah, 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 you know? And it's like, no, I get to choose. Like I get to choose who I am in this situation. I may not get to choose what the situation is. I may not get to choose how the other person behaves. And yet I get to choose what story I tell myself. And I'm not talking about the, dis you know, the, the delusional story. What do I take from this situation? And who do I decide to become in the situation? and to become as a result of the situation. And so again, that's how we begin to take our power back. So we, we started out earlier saying, you know, like who has a dream, who has something that they're, they're, they're looking to um, create or experience or become. And so as we're looking at that and we're saying, okay, I've got this dream, I've got this idea, I've got this vision of who I want to be, what I'm, I want my life to look like, how I want to become someone different or a different version or a better version of who I am right now or be in a better situation. And so like what 
what is that choice? Like, how do I, how do I do it? Where do I start? Like, what is the next right step? And so that is, that is the starting point. So it's like, I don't have to figure out the whole game plan. I just have to figure out what is the next right step. So put a two in the chat if you are in the process of healing right now. Put a two in the chat if you're in the process of healing right now. Yes, healing, healing. Two, healing, yes, yes. Cool, cool. And then... And this, because sometimes they happen simultaneously. Put a three in the chat if you're in the process of growing right now. Put a three in the chat if you're in the process of growing. Cool. Yes. Yay. I love that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give a well. Yes. So that's so awesome. That is so awesome that if you're, you're healing and you're growing. Um, again, you're making a choice. You're making a choice to be here. You're making a choice to heal. You're making a choice to grow. And so again, I just want to make sure that you are acknowledging that about yourself, that you are celebrating that about yourself because I can't tell you how exciting that is because a lot of times, you know, a lot of my clients, you know, as, as a dream doula and transformation coach, you know, I deal with, with women who are in transition and a lot of them are just like, I don't know what to do. And so they're feeling like paralyzed almost, and there's no judgment on that. And yet, you know, in this moment, for those of you who are like growing and, evolving and showing up and seeking so you know just one more time put a yay in the chat for you yay come on now chardonnay or cabernet <laughs> yes celebrating you celebrating you well yes that's right yes that's what i'm talking about oh gosh and that is what that's what I love about the work that I do. Like, I love seeing people heal. I love being a part of that process. Champagne. Yes, indeed. Love it. Um, that, that being that, that vessel, if you will, or that guide, um, you know, and again, like I said, my work as a dream doula is really about helping people to give birth to their dreams. And, you know, part of the birthing process is, and I think that, that this happens a lot of times, people are like, oh my God, why is this happening to me? And why does this feel like this? And da, 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 da. And yet when you think about it, like right before you're getting ready to give birth, what you experience is discomfort. You know, you experience the tightness, you experience contractions, you experience discomfort. And so we so too often get freaked out by that. And yet in some ways, that's when we really need to get excited because it's like, oh, wait a minute, something's fitting to happen. You know, something's getting ready to change. Like this discomfort, you know, I know is a signal of me going to that next place, that next step, or at the very least, it is my signal that I need to seek out support. I need to seek out um, a coach, I need to seek out a mentor, I need to seek out a therapist, whatever that, whatever tool you need in your toolbox to grow in this season, you know, definitely be about getting it, be about moving in that direction and giving yourself permission to get the help that you need, to get the support that you need, to, to voice what your needs are, because I think that that's one of the things that we don't do enough is we don't ask for what we want. We don't ask for what we need. And sometimes it's because we don't even know what it is. And so, again, that's when a coach or a therapist or a mentor can really help you. Um, and there were some questions that we shared um, recently, but one of them is like, what do you want? And, you know, I was talking to a client recently who was just super frustrated and, 
sad and, you know, and rightfully so. And all of this stuff was happening. And so I said to her, I said, what do you want? Like, just take a moment because she was so focused on what was happening, what had been done, you know, all of those different things that she was, again, focusing on those external situations that she felt like she, she felt helpless, you know, and so what I wanted to do is help her redirect and say, what do you want? You know, what do you want? And I think that wants are stronger is a stronger word. I mean, I, well, wants and needs, it, it just depends. But what it's like, I want this to stop. Like when we really get to say that that way with that clear conviction, like I want this to change. I want this to be better. I want you know, whatever that is, I want, I want peace. I want clarity. I want, I want them gone. (laughs) You know, whatever that is that we get to say, okay, I'm going to say what I want, because I think so many times we're almost afraid to say what we want. You know, like we judge like, well, I can't ask for that. You know, I can't, I can't, you know, I should be grateful for what I have or, you know, or that'll hurt their feelings or whatever. And so we, we make our wants small or we, we, we stuff them down and we put them on the back burner, you know? So how, how many people in here have, have put what they wanted and they needed on the back burner, put a five in the chat. If you have put what you wanted and what you needed on the back burner. Yes. Yes. So, you know, again, because we, we don't, we don't know how to be comfortable with making our needs a priority. We don't know how to be comfortable with um, just telling the truth. And, and one of the things that we can do as we're on this journey is learning how to tell our truth with no energy attached to it because so many times it's like by the time we speak what we want we are either frustrated we're angry we're sad and so it just erupts out of us as opposed to being able to say I need to tell you this and so I really need you to hear me and so I I I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to understand my heart. I want you to understand my position that this is not acceptable for me. You know, instead of you always do this and you make me feel like a blah, 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 blah. No, this is not acceptable for me. This doesn't feel comfortable for me. This is not healthy for me. So when we learn to put language around what we want and what we need, without getting caught up in the emotion of it. Because the emotion is our work. You know what I mean? So again, I'm not telling you not to feel what you're feeling. What I'm saying is that when we begin to communicate and articulate what our needs are, if people cannot hear us because of everything else that's going around, you know, then then we are doing ourselves a disservice because we're not articulating what our need is. And so being able to clearly, you know, articulate it and set boundaries and all of those things. And look, I totally understand that when we begin to do this, people start freaking out. It's like, what do you mean you're not always going to be there? What do you mean you're not going to carry all the weight? What do you, you know, like, and it's like, you know what, sweetie, love you, mean it. And yet that's not a healthy choice for me anymore. And so, again, when you don't allow yourself to be overly emotional in the articulation of it, and it, it, it also empowers you not to be manipulated by the emotion of the other person. So I just want to pause with that because like that felt, I don't know, that felt good to me. That that being able to articulate things in a way with the clarity and the center and the calm 
and like this room with the peace in a way that we can not only say what we want, mean what we say, that we choose not to be manipulated by other people having an emotional response. And I know that that takes a lot of work, you know, and it just, it also depends upon the kind of person that you're dealing with. And, you know, I know that there are a lot of people who have come through and that are on this, this, this platform and definitely have been in my room, you know, who are, you know, are or have dealt with, with, you know, narcissistic personality disorder and dealing with, with all of that and the gaslighting and the EIEIO. And yet even in that, as we know, like the gray rock kind of technique of saying, I'm not going to respond to the, the other part, that part I'm not doing. I'm just, I'm focusing on this right now. This is the only thing I'm willing to have a conversation about. So all that other stuff, that's on you. And I'm not having a conversation about that. So again, centering in that peace and centering in that clarity and, and doing this process of moving forward, you know, moving towards our dreams. So, because we are all talking about, we have dreams, we have aspirations, we have plans. And if we keep getting distracted by the the noise and the nonsense of whatever we're healing from coming through whatever that is it doesn't allow us to get focused and centered on where we're going so one of the things that i really want you to be clear on and i say this all the time our dreams are the roadmap to our destiny that dream that you have that longing that you have, that vision that you have, that thing that lights you up just thinking about it and yet for whatever reason you didn't allow yourself to think about it or you've been disappointed so many times that you don't trust that that's still for you, I want you to know that your dream is your roadmap to your destiny. Your dream is your gift. You know, we, we have giftings in different areas. And so your dream is your gift. It was the gift that you were given. And, and sometimes it may even feel like a burden because the weight of it or the, the enormity of it is like, like, especially people who have big dreams, you know, and I mean, all dreams matter. And yet there are some dreams that are like, I can't even say this out loud because people will think I'm crazy. And yet I know this is for me. Like that dream and that being able to reconnect with it and to love on it and to be present with it. And I think that that's why it is so important to have one, two, or three trusted advisors that you can share that with, you know, and, and be really clear um, and feel safe about that, to have a safe space that you can say, this, this is what I want. This is what I feel called to. And again, like I shared, you know, I, um, I work with women who are in transition and a lot of them are usually, you know, like transitioning from like C-suites. So they've been ex super successful in, in specific areas of their lives. And yet they're in a season that that is not the end game for them, or that is not the goal, or, you know, like they're, they're either complete with it or they're dis, um, disillusioned with it. It's like, I worked this hard for all of this, or I've built everybody else's dream, but mine, or I've done this for so long. And yet what I really want to be is something so different. And so how do I begin to move in that direction? And, you know, the first thing is just acknowledging it. And, you know, sometimes that's really challenging if you're, you know, like maybe you're in a corporate kind of situation and it's like, and you want to, I don't know, you want to open a flower shop or whatever, you know, and people are like, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, and it's like, no, this is really what my gift is. And then when you begin to trust that and, you know, people are like, well, how much are you going to make making flowers? And yet 
like with the internet, you can make a million dollars doing anything. I know there's a woman on, on the internet right now who makes $4 million a year teaching knitting. So everything is possible and everything is on the table. And yet if you let people talk you out of it, and yet you are so gifted in that area, but people can't hear it or celebrate it or encourage it because you have, you have checked, check the boxes that they wanted to put you in and yet you didn't check the box that is resonating in your soul so that time of really being able to trust your dream again and love your dream again and know that there is a way that you can do it there is a way you know and sometimes it may just be you know doing a parallel right now or whatever that looks like and yet moving in that direction of your dream, trusting yourself enough to say, this keeps coming up for me and I have to, I have to live into it. I have to love into it. I have to trust it. And yet you don't have a circle that's going to celebrate you. That's why you get a coach. That's why you go to a therapist. You know, that's why you have a mentor. You know, those dreams that you have matter. And anything and everything is possible. And I can tell you from personal experience, you know, I grew up in a working class, blue collar neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, you know, I always dreamed of being on the stage in lights as a little girl. You know, I used to watch MG musicals and you know I'm a woman of color so there's no like there was nobody who looked like me on any MGM musicals and yet I just knew I needed to be in lights and have on gowns and people dancing and all of that and that was like my dream and my passion and of course you know it's like my dad was like but honey you're smart you could have a real job and yet I turned 21 in Paris touring with a classical choir because I would not give up on my dream. And, you know, as I shared with you earlier today, yes, I have an adult son with special needs and he had his first seizure at eight months old. And um, when I tell you, you've never seen something that small shake that hard. And so I made the choice and the decision to, you know, while I turned 21 in Paris and had come back and gotten married. And when he was born with special needs, I made the choice to forego an international career And yet I still kept pursuing my passion and pursuing my dreams in different ways. And I have come through so many different things. And now I sit here as a dream doula, you know, having, like I said, having turned 21 in Paris and then walked away from uh, a toxic and dysfunctional marriage after 30 years, going through three months of, of homelessness And then going back to Paris for my 60th birthday, first class, to celebrate my birth and my rebirth after homelessness in less than uh, 18 months. So it is about trusting that still small voice, trusting that part of you that says, I know that there's more. I know that I'm meant for more. I know that there's more for me. So put a seven in the chat if you are looking towards more, becoming more, having more, doing more, having more impact. Put a seven in the chat. Yes, seven, 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 yes. So I want you to know that more is possible. You know, you're you're on the path, you're, you're seeking the support, you're seeking the training, um, you're, you're, you're doing the work around the healing, you're headed in the right direction. And I just want to honor you and celebrate you again for that, that you keep moving in the direction of your dreams. You keep setting your intention, you know, that, that I know that this is for me, you know, I, I know without a doubt. And like when I first started on this, this, uh, this new iteration of, you know, going into the coaching and I, I wrote a book and, and hadn't even set out to write a book. My, my daughter was going through some challenges and I just wanted to write some notes for her to just encourage her. And it just flowed and a book came out of it. And that was like one of the first things that kind of set me on my, this path that, oh, wow. So 
me being on stage, like I did sing on stage and all of that, but like now I'm on stage is speaking and I'm coaching and I'm teaching. And so I had to be open to that. And so I went and got a coach and my first coach, I'll never forget him. And I absolutely adore him to this day. And what he told me was success is inevitable. Like Roz, success is an inevitable. And we did the work and we mapped out the plan. And, you know, that's that's how I've learned to be a great coach because I had great coaches and I was a super good student. And so success is inevitable. When you set your intention and you move in the direction of your dreams and you start making those shifts, you know, that that mind shift mindset shift and that passion shift and that intention shift. And the biggest thing is shifting your energy. Because again, if you're allowing your energy to be sucked off by other people who are not for your highest good, and I'm not talking about from a judgment, like they're, they're just no good. They're not for your highest good. And so you have to make that choice and you have to, you know, pull back and, and, and create a smaller, safer space and circle for you to begin to grow so that you can trust that your dreams are for you, that you can trust that I can set an intention. I can grow. I can come back. I can keep growing and evolving and, um, and, you know, and creating new iterations of life and who I am and how I show up in the world. So I really want you to know that that is so possible and so available to you. Um, and again, when you show up in these kinds of spaces and you have these conversations and um, you're just you're feeding your soul, you're feeding your spirit, you're feeding, you know, that part of you that may not be fully actualized, may not be fully celebrated, may not be fully seen. And so when you come into spaces like this, um, you're doing the work and you're letting that inner voice lead you and guide you to what you need next. So I also just want to take this moment to share that I do have a resource that you can tap into. It's a 21 day mindset reset and it's a downloadable uh, worksheet. It's got mantras and daily practices and journal prompts. And so it's, uh, I'll share a link and you can go and see if it serves you. And um, it's just another tool that you can put in your toolbox. It's a 21 day mindset reset and you can just move, you know, use this as kind of a jumping off point and to begin to create your own roadmap and what that looks like for you. And um, also just, if you want to have more access, you can find me on different platforms. I'm at Roz, that's R-O-Z, Roz, Diva Nation, all one word. And, um, you know, LinkedIn, I, I'm really heavy on LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, Instagram, you, I'm thinking whatever, E-I-E-I-O. I'm, I'm doing all the platforms. I'm not a Twitter girl, but everything else pretty much you can find me. So please definitely, you know, follow my content. Uh, there's a ton of stuff that I have videos and trainings and all of that. So I, if I can serve you, I would love to do that. If just being in here is enough, I'm happy to have you here. But if you want, you know, a deeper dive or more access to me, even well, it's um, 1997, Kelly. Um to move in that direction. I am here to serve and here to support. So Kelly asked how much is the book? It's 1997. Um, so, and it's a 21 mind, 21 day mindset reset and it's a downloadable PDF. So um, yeah, go ahead. If it suits, suits you and serves you, that's a great kind of jumping off point and a tool. And what I love about that work is it's super cool to do it and then do some more work and then go back to it and do it again because you get to even watch what your growth is or what your ideas are, or what you've actually created over that time. And so that's the beautiful thing about continuing to go and grow. So if, you know, the, the biggest thing that I really want you to be clear about today is one, your dreams are the roadmap to your destiny. To the fact that you are 
on this path of seeking and growing and and looking for other ways to continue to evolve into that next great part of you, that next great iteration of you, that highest part of you. And just the biggest thing is like, allow yourself to dream again. Like allow yourself to enjoy your dreams. I always talk about living a life filled with joy and vibrancy and purpose. And so while we have, challenges and we have things that may be painful or whatever that is also find the joy and create space for joy and know again that all of that emanates from you you will attract what you are we don't attract what we want we attract what we are so the more that you are intentional about being joyful the more you will attract joy in your life. The more you are intentional about gratitude, the more you will attract abundance into your life. The more that you are intentional about living as the highest version of yourself, the more you will be surrounded by people who will come alongside you and walk with you and celebrate you and grow with you. It's, it's an amazing thing. It really, it happens all the time. And again, there are no accidents. Like when you come in a space like this, it is because you are being led to that next thing that you need, that next way that you need to show up in the world. So at this place, um, if anybody has a question, or something that you want to share, just hit that little thing and raise your hand. I would love to hear from you and love to, um, you know, uh, you know, obviously answer any questions that you have. So any questions that anybody has or any share that you want to share, and you can also put it in the chat if you're not comfortable being off mic, that's okay as well. And every, it's so funny, but every time we get this, to this every week, it locks me out of one or the other. So hold on, I'm going to dip out and dip back. All right, now I get to check the chat. Oh, thank you, Kelly. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, this really is who I am and how I show up in the world, you know, and it's because I choose to. Because chat, as they say, child, <laughs> I, can, I mean, I could be like super angry and E-I-E-I-O, but I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. Like, there's too much to be joyful about. And like, and I just like it better. I just rather be joyful. So um, it is just an intentional thing for me to just show up <clears throat> and, and, you know, show up to serve. And I think that's the other thing, like, I am so honored that I get to do this. Like, I'm so honored that I get to share and that, you know, you all would spend an hour with me and, and, and just share, you know, your experiences and your energy and all of that. Like, this is just a great opportunity and a great gift. And I am, I'm so grateful for it. So thank you so much for you being here yeah i'm i'm glad you know so um you are so healing you give me hope you know what yeah because it hope springs eternal and when i tell you um thank you casey i hope i said it right um and i'll answer your question in one second so yes that that there is hope there absolutely is hope and and i can tell you again like i said I don't care what you have experienced. There is a way through it. There is a way to a higher purpose, a higher calling. And so whether it happened to you or you made the wrong choice, like all of us, we have made some crazy choices sometimes. And yet we get to heal and come back from that. We get to be forgiven and the forgiveness starts with us that we get to forgive ourselves for the choices that we made. Because like I said, I left a marriage after 30 years and like my conversation could be like, girl, (laughs) she couldn't have done that 15 years earlier or whatever. Yes, I am here every week. Yes. Um, And yet I was just like, 
that was my journey. And for, you know, a myriad of reasons, I, I stayed and then I grew and then I made a choice not to. And so it's my journey. And so rather than judge my journey, I just find the place of giving, um, you know, giving thanks for it. And like, like, yeah, I'm gone. Thank you. So, but yet also like I got to become who I got became. Okay. So this is my question is, can we heal while in a new relationship? We are both self-aware and codependent and attending code of class therapy, meditation, et cetera. But sometimes I question my authenticity. Wow. Wow. What a beautiful question. And this is what I love is like the last part that you're saying, sometimes I question my authenticity. So just the fact that you're questioning it means that there's something there and that that's a good thing. And so I don't think there's one right answer. And I say that for a couple of reasons. And again, like I shared, I am the mom of an adult son with special needs. And what I've learned in the journey uh, with my son, he is on the lower end of the spectrum, nonverbal, complicated by seizures. So, and like everybody, especially when he was younger, like, you need to do this. You need to do ABA. You need to do low loss. You need to do blah, blah, blah. And what I found is I needed to do what was best for him. You know what I mean? And so some stuff worked for him and some stuff didn't. And I mean, when I tell you we did everything, including swim with dolphins, don't, you know, like we tried everything. And the biggest thing in that journey was like, cause I was like, Oh God, fix him. Oh God, fix him. Oh God, fix him. And then God fixed me. And so when you are in a healing process, you know, I think, that yes, it's good to have some space and time to heal for yourself. And yet, you know, that's a convert, you know, that's a decision that you have to make together because you're already in it. So like you are where you are. And so the question in the inquiry becomes like, can we do this together or do I need to do this separately? Because like you said, especially if there's a, a degree of codependency, is, is what you're experiencing real? And, and so that really is an inquiry that you will have to do together. I would encourage, you know, getting some therapy separately and maybe together so that you can have those conversations and do that exploration in a way that is healthy and, and affirming and kind. And this is the thing, whatever the answer is, like the answer has to be right for you. So, you know, that that's the biggest thing. And that's, I, I can honestly say for myself, that's one of the reasons I stayed in, in my marriage for so long. Cause I was like, Oh my God, everything's going to fall apart and go to hell if I leave and blah, 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 you know? And it was like, so I was always looking out for everybody else. And in the process was like, I didn't look out for me. And because I am a, a, a nurturer by nature, I, it was easy for me to create that dynamic. And so that's the part of it that I own. I created the dynamic because I used to identify as a rescuer. You know, and so again, like I said earlier, we attract what we are. So if I identify as a rescuer, what am I going to attract? People who are in peril, people who are broken, people who need to be rescued or whatever, people who identify love with being rescued or with trauma or whatever. And so, you know, as I did my work and my healing and my growth, and because I was such a big personality, if you haven't picked up on that yet, um, you know, I thought I was handling everything. And so it took my time of saying, okay, this is not healthy and affirming in my body, you know, because I always say, if it doesn't come out of your mouth, it'll show up in your body. And so my body, you know, created dis-ease and an autoimmune disease. And so that was kind of one of my first clues. And so again, even staying because I wanted to, you know, keep my family together, didn't want to be unkind, whatever. I did 
didn't do enough work around taking care of myself. So as you're doing this exploration, as you're doing this healing process, um, give yourself permission to make the choices that are best for you and not in a cavalier way and yet in a way that is healthy. So if the two of you can do this healing process together and come through it as a unit, beautiful. And if you can't, that's okay too. And so just, I would really encourage you to make wise, healthy, and affirming choices because you don't want to recreate what you've already created. You want to create something new. You want to do something different. So that would be um, my answer. So I hope that that helps. I hope that that is helpful. I really do. Any other questions? Anybody else have a question? Okay, let me ask you a question then. What was your biggest, leave it in the chat, or no, you know, or if you want to unmic, you can. Um, what was your biggest takeaway from today? What was your big aha moment? What was your well moment? What was your takeaway? Leave it in. If you don't want to raise your hand and speak, put it in the chat. What was the takeaway for today? I'd love to know. Anybody? Oh, here we go. Somebody's typing. Yay. 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 And so, <clears throat> yes, I am here every week. Um, and so please definitely come back. I would love to hear, you know, stay connected. Like I said, if you want to, you know, connect with me during the week, cause I'm here every Wednesday. Um, like I said, it's Roz, R-O-Z, Roz Diva Nation and, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, TikTok, E-I-E-I-O. Yes, we attract what we are. I love that one. Yeah. Because so many times we're like, I want this, but why does everything else keep happening? It's like, because you're not aligned with what you should. You're, is, is my one coach I work with. She said, the tongue in your mouth and the tongue in your shoe are not going in the same direction. My my biggest breakaway or breakthrough for today was that I received news about a better job. Yay, better job opportunity. Congratulations. After struggling with finding something I can thoroughly enjoy with my career. How awesome is that? Good on you. Good on you. Congratulations. I can continue my healing journey to complete my dream and I don't have to attract bad things. No, you don't. And yes, you can. Yes, 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 you can. So I really, um, and in that, you know, what I love about this, you know, your healing journey and creating what you want, like it is so wide open and it does not mean that it's rainbows and unicorns. And yet it does mean that when you are clear about purpose, clear about intention, clear about direction, and you have the coaching and the training and the support that you need when things go left, because they will, we all have bumps in the roads. We all have challenges. We all get, you know, you know, we all get shook sometimes. It makes sense, you know, that you'll know like, okay, I don't have to fall apart about this. I don't have to judge it because failure is just information. And so it won't be as frightening or overwhelming. So I love that for you. Yes, the tongue in your mouth and the tongue in my shoe are not going in the same direction. Yeah, I love that one too. And like I said, I can't, I can't take credit for it. My coach used to say that. So, you know, she was like, make sure the tongue in your mouth and the tongue in your shoe are going in the same direction. So that's really, you know, super great inf uh, advice to have. So yeah, I love that. Love that. So I'm glad that resonated with you. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so definitely, um, you know, stay connected with me, you know, um, come back, I would love to continue to serve and celebrate and um, see what you're saying. Did I miss anybody? I want to I'm going back through here and make sure I didn't miss anybody. It's so funny, I had to learn how to do this and keep keep up. Um, I was like, how do people do that? How do you talk and type and teach and all of that? So, uh, yeah. And like I said, I'll put the link for the Mindset Reset in here one more time if anybody wants to pick it up. Um, like Kelly asked, um, 
it's it's 19 I, I believe it's 1997 so it's a really great entry work place and just great work to do um daily practices that really set you on the path to head in the right direction and what i'm also going to put in here for you too is the link for the replays usually go up within 48 hours so if you want to go back and check out the replay and um you know take notes or whatever oh thank you kelly says say hello to your son and tell him thank you for sharing his mama with us thank you so much and i hope it was the humming wasn't distracting for you and it's so funny because like i said um i was a classical singer for years so i mean obviously in the womb he heard singing so he hums all the time so he's nonverbal, but he has hums and and like you can tell by his hums what he wants he has an annoyed hum and he has a content hum and he has an anxious hum so like he's got us trained so it's 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 really super sweet so his sister um is visiting with us right now too so we he keeps us on our toes for sure so this is the link oh or not okay Okay, so here that's the link to lift up. I'm off topic, but this may be a silly question. But how can I really heal and learn to grow to be anew? I know you mentioned keep learning and all, but sometimes it's not as straightforward. I'm working hard to change my framework of my mind, but it's sometimes, yes, it sometimes feels like two steps forward and three steps back. And you know what? That is absolutely right. You know, so don't like be freaked out about it. And what I would say, because I love this analogy of the two steps forward and three steps back, embrace the dance because you it's a dance. You know, it's not linear and it's not absolute, you know, so embrace the dance. So when we when you get the two steps forward, you know, give yourself that yay. And when you get those three steps back, Trust that you got two more forward coming just the same. And so don't judge yourself. So when you talk about changing the framework, the framework is giving yourself grace to grow, giving yourself permission to fail, because if you're not failing, you're not trying and just moving in that direction. So give yourself grace and permission and just do the dance, enjoy the dance because it's, you know, that's part of it. So when we set an intention for joy, no matter what, like, it's like, okay, this moment is 50 shades of crazy, but I'm still going to find the joy in it. I'm still going to trust that I still get to be who I choose to be in that process. So that, that is what I would encourage you to do. So, oh my gosh, I feel like Carol Burnett, I'm so glad we had this time together. So it's already time out. So come off the mic and at least tell everybody good night. Good night. Thank you. Oh, Nomi, go ahead, girl. What you oh, got? I just wanted to tell you, like, thank you so much. I actually wrote it in my notes. Um, hold on, baby. When you were talking about your son, because I also have an autistic son, um, when you said God fixed him, God fixed him, and then God fixed me, like, I started tearing up. Because oh. I, I had this this talk with my pastor, like, because he didn't talk uh, for until he was four, and people kept giving me like all kinds of crazy advice. And my pastor came to me, and she was like, "Why do you think God gives us our children?" And I kind of like I was in a bad mood, so I wanted to blow her off and be like, "I don't know, maybe to humble me." And then I really thought about it because he 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 does a lot of the same things I do. So I was like, "I don't know, maybe compassion, maybe." to be more patient and he really did like change my life like brought out all the best parts of me it's been a great journey so thank you for saying that oh you are so welcome my love you are so so welcome give him a hug from miss ross so you don't know who she is but she's sending you a big old hug so thank you so hey good night everybody i'm mike and say good night good night Good night. Be well, everyone. Thank you for showing up. See you next week. At least I hope to. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Be well.